Hello, I'm Tom Long and today we're on the island salt marsh, steps from the beach. I'd like to share with you my thoughts on the gospel reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Feel free to pause the video now and read the passage for, for yourself. Some scholars believe that by this point, like the blind man who had been given sight, Jesus' followers had been cast out of their synagogue communities and felt isolated and vulnerable. Into this context, Jesus spoke his words of comfort. Let not your, and here he's using the plural for your, let not y'all, <laughs> let not your heart. Now here, some translations translated hearts, but he used, in the original Greek, he uses the singular version of heart. Let not your, plural, heart, singular, be troubled. Jesus is talking to his disciples as them having one common heart. Gently he encourages them, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is talking about his disciples as having that one heart. He says he's going to his father's house to get our rooms ready and that he will come back and get us and fetch us home with himself. He then says to his disciples, you know the way to the place to which my namesake Thomas makes the almost humorously honest response, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answers, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way because he is the gate to the sheep pen, as he said back in John chapter 10, verse 7. It is through faith in him that we become a part of God's family, become one of God's sheep, God's household. We will even have a room in God's house prepared for us by Jesus himself. Jesus is the way because he is the example of how we should be living the kingdom life. Jesus is the truth, not just about how to join God's ha household as a child, but about who God is. Jesus is the life. Being connected to God through Jesus is what it means to be fully alive. It is for this very reason that Jesus came, according to John chapter 3, verse 16, and John chapter 10, verse 10. When Abraham met God in the burning bush, God gave his name as I am. Now John tells us that Jesus is the I am because he tells us of several times when Jesus used that expression. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the true vine. With all of these I am's, John is forcefully driving home what Jesus forcefully drove home to his disciples. John is driving home what he said in the prologue to this gospel. Jesus is the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not that we modern people are any thicker than the disciples. Philip followed up on Jesus' drop the mic, I am statement by asking Jesus to show them the Father. Jesus amplifies what he has been saying, what he's been teaching them by stating plainly, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Then Jesus wraps it all up by pointing back to himself as our way. If we have faith, we will do his works, he says, and even greater as he will answer those prayers offered in his name. Jesus doesn't really amplify what he means when he says that we will do even greater works. I don't think he's saying that, uh, you know, Thomas or Mark or Peter or anybody else is going to go out and do greater works than what Jesus did. I think he's saying that you, the people of the church, are going to do greater works. For sure, the history of the church is riddled with embarrassing failures in both love and justice. 
On the other hand, even though his primary instruments of working in the world are billions of sinners <laughs> that he has forgiven, the church has had and continues to have quite an overall positive effect on the world. Consider the impact that Christians have had across the globe. Educating, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, giving shelter to the homeless, providing refuge to those in need of a safe place, sending disaster relief, providing ministries of healing in hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, and addiction rehabilitation ministries, marching for civil rights, speaking out for and standing up for justice and equality, empowering the disenfranchised, setting at liberty captives, including those who were victims of human trafficking. Christians have around the world proclaimed the good news of God's love for each of us in Christ Jesus. We have done greater works in the sense of a greater scale, instruments of Christ's work through billions of us over many generations. Do you know the way to a room in God's house? If you have faith, Jesus has shown us the way, and Jesus is the way because he died for our shortcomings, our wrongs, our sins. Jesus is the way, and he calls us, me and you, to follow the way, to be the light of love, mercy, and justice. It's not so much that I am inviting you to walk with me. Jesus is inviting us to walk with him.